Good afternoon and welcome to the Wealth of Advice Market Update on Monday the 8th of August 2022. So it's been three weeks since I recorded the last client update. Uh, at that time I was much more uh, pessimistic um, about how things were going. Uh, the month of June had been an absolutely horrific month for investments, uh, but I'm pleased to say that from the beginning of July um, all the way up to the back end of last week, markets have gone back up. Uh, most of our client portfolios have done very well through that month, so that's certainly pleasing. Uh, so the content of what we're going to talk about uh, in today's update, uh, which hopefully will reassure some clients with the information we have. In market news, uh, what the Bank of England's doing, what their forecasts have been. Um, inflation, it's all you're hearing in the news and how that's affecting everything. Um, central banks and inflation, how they often get it wrong. Uh, we look at how corporate strategy is affected by inflation, what certain companies might do, it depend on the market that they're in. Uh, geopolitical risk, which seems to be all over the place right now. Uh, the US government has recently passed a $430 billion bill that's gone through the Senate, which hopefully will be positive for markets. Uh, oil companies are also in the news. They're raking it in. Um, GDP, are we in a recession? Are we not in a recession? What does all those numbers mean? Um, and the final bit will be how market, on market news will be how markets are flipping at the moment. Uh, and then, as I say, we'll finish the presentation off with the regular update on market performance. So in market news, the main topic of conversation in the UK in the last week was the fact that the Bank of England decided to raise interest rates by half a percent. Uh, the base rate in England is now 1.75%. The newspaper headlines were saying it's the biggest single increase that we've seen to the interest rate in nearly 30 years. The fact of the matter is interest rates are still web, well below where they were 15 years ago. But the Bank of England has to raise interest to try and get inflation under control. Uh, UK inflation recently quoted have been around about 9.4%. Uh, the Governor of Bank of England, who, um, as we'll come on to shortly, got his data in his, 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 his predictions wrong early part of the year. He's predicted that inflation will peak uh, at around 13% in October and it's going to remain high through 2023. Uh, the Bank of England expects the UK economy to shrink at the last quarter of this year uh, and keep shrinking until the end of 2023. So very negative predictions from the Bank of England. <clears throat> Interestingly, when uh, he made these predictions, markets didn't collapse, markets didn't fall. Markets have already priced in the bad news that they were expecting. This is not sort of new news to markets. It's not rocket science that as prices go up, consumers will spend less and therefore um, GDP will reduce. Um, the Bank of England uh, and the same sort of people across in, Ameri in America are firmly blaming all this on the rising gas prices following Russia's invasion of Ukraine. Um, and they obviously major warnings coming out of what energy prices in our country will go up to uh, in October. Central banks have to issue forecasts all the time. Uh, this graph that you can see on the screen right now, it's worth noting that uh, most of these people who issue these forecasts never get their forecasts right. And as you can see there, there are previous predictions of what the uh, the Bank of England's Monetary Policy Committee uh, expected CPI inflation to be. Um, and as you can see on every one of those projections, they kind of got it wrong. It was only, say, February or March where the Bank of England uh, was suggesting that inflation may peak June, July of this year and start to go down thereafter. Obviously, the problem they've got with inflation is, yes, the oil price might be coming down, the gas price might be coming down, but a lot of other price increases are staying there and they're sticky. Uh, we've mentioned previously that wage price growth causes um, inflation and that's sticky because once someone's salary goes up, it doesn't go down. So now we look at how is inflation impacting sales uh, of various different companies and around the world. Um, one good example that we were given recently when we were talking to a fund manager was the company Heinz. I'm sure uh, virtually every person watching this update has either consumed or purchased a Heinz product at some point in the recent past. Uh, maybe not because their prices are going up. As I say, their, their, their prices have shot up 12% in the last quarter. Um, but that hasn't been enough to put consumers off enough to see their sales fall by an equivalent amount. And they're saying that sales are only down 2.3% in that quarter. So the big CEOs of all of these companies will absolutely love this kind of situation because now they're saying, what can they increase prices by before consumer demand falls off? This is called the price elasticity of demand, if you were to look in your economics textbooks. And as I say, every company around the world right now, um, and I've said this for a few clients, are effectively bang at it. They're trying to put their prices up as much as they can and see how much sales drop off. So Heinz know that this 12% increase in the last quarter hasn't really uh, deterred too many clients. And what they're saying is you have different types of consumers. Some consumers will immediately stop purchasing that product and go elsewhere. Um, 
and some consumers will just continue paying what it is and they believe um, that, that it's kind of 50% of consumers who just carry on and buy things regardless and then another the 50% who actually notice that they pay more from it. Um, I don't know what category of client you fit into. I mean the one thing I notice uh, more than anything is what um, price of petrol and uh, is at the pump so to speak more than anything else. Some people are just putting the prices up willy nilly, other manufacturers bringing out low price goods. Um, either way they're just trying to sell and make as much profit as they possibly can. Again, bring that back to your investments. Hopefully, that will, what that will mean is eventually stock markets do recover because all these companies will be announcing mega profits in the not-too-distant future. So in geopolitical news now, and there's been quite a lot going on in that space, as you can imagine, with the war going on in the Ukraine. The Americans um, decided then to um, send Nancy Pelosi across to Taiwan, uh, which has really wound the Chinese up. The Chinese have resulted in uh, doing lots of drills um, um, with their Navy in the sea near Japan. Uh, thankfully, again, that didn't call, cause markets to collapse. We put CNN on one night last week, and one of their reporters was big enough saying, is this going to be the start of another war? Uh, that would obviously be the fear. Um, but no, no real reductions in markets. Markets did very well again last week. Crossing the US, over the weekend, the US Senate passed a $430 billion Inflation Reduction Act. Um, the bill aims to reduce energy prices uh, and carbon emissions through renewable energy spending. Markets have liked that. It's Monday afternoon, about 20 past three right now. The US markets have been open for just under an hour and they've all gone, gone up um, on, on the back of this news, so that's good. Um, and hopefully, as I say, more of these positive news stories will come out, not just from there, but around the world, and markets will pick back up um, again and start uh, seeing some good growth. Um, the oil companies, obviously, they get a lot of bad press. This isn't geopolitical news, it's just all over the world. Uh, BP have reported their largest quarterly profits in 14 years, up 6.9 billion from April to June of this year. Um, that's triple the amount that they made in the same period last year. So a lot of people are in the press, really negative, negative, negative was the oil companies. We've seen this, as say, when you go and put the petrol in the car, um, the, the, the price of that's unbelievable. But the price of oil has come down. It was $130 a barrel roughly uh, February into March. I think it's around about $95 a barrel right now. So hopefully the next few weeks the price of uh, oil will come down. The big thing in the UK is going to be, as I say, energy prices at the end of the year. But whilst companies are getting um, slated for sort of making these mega profits, um, the people who run these companies will obviously be pleased that they've done so. That's going to be re uh, rewarded in shareholder wealth. And what that means is every client who invests in these things will see hopefully higher prices uh, come through in what they're looking at when they look at the valuations in the not too distant future. So when we're talking about inflation you will hear in the press a lot of quotes about what GDP is doing. Um, so in this next little section we talk about what GDP is and how it's um, going right now. Uh, GDP stands for gross domestic product mentioned this a few times over the years uh, on these presentations, but it's a key indicator uh, or the indicator of whether a country's in recession or not. So many countries consider two consecutive quarters of GDP falling to be a technical recession. A few weeks ago, we believe the UK was already in um, a technical recession. Uh, we will actually find out, I think it's um, in a few days' time, um, the, maybe the end of this week when the Bank of England announces the data from the end of the second quarter. Um, but again, markets have expected this. Markets believe we're in a recession right now, so I don't believe um, that it's going to cause too much um, um, negative um, impact on markets at that time. Um, the US measures recession slightly differently. Um, and the US um, Federal Reserve Chairman uh, said last week that he doesn't believe that the US is in a recession. Uh, the US Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen said when you're creating 400,000 jobs a month, this is not a recession. And that's the crazy thing with this current situation that we find ourselves in. Um, unemployment uh, is at all time lows. Uh, some of the headlines we've got on the screen now show what the July rep uh, jobs reports was there. Um, the unemployment rate fell to 3.5%. The labour market um, is the best it's been um, since 1969. So if you're a politician and you want to get elected and you can say to your, um, your, your voters that you've got inf uh, unemployment all the way down, it's down to the lowest level it's been for 50, 60 years, then surely that's a good thing. Certain parts um, of the media have been reported as a bad thing because it's saying, well, there's a labour shortage, there's not enough people to do the jobs, therefore wage prices going up as a result. So sometimes you just can't win. But it means that this recession is probably going to be uh, different to the type of recessions um, that we've seen in the past. 
the US Federal Reserve Chair Jerome Powell. He also doesn't think that the US is in a recession right now. Um, and he says, when you think about a recession, it's normally a broad-based decline across many industries uh, that sustain more than a couple of months. That's not what it feels like now. Um, and, and I agree, as I say, it doesn't feel like that we're in a recession caused because of job losses and companies going bust. What we're seeing now is what happened after COVID. We were locked down for so long. The price of everything went down because people weren't out, weren't spending. A lot of people ended up with a lot more money in their pocket through bounce back loans, furlough schemes, just the fact that they weren't spending for the best part of 18 months. You open up the world, everyone goes out, starts spending, demand goes up, supply chain issues. We've still got lockdowns in certain parts of China, which is preventing the supply of many parts around the world. So inflation was always going to rage back. Again, go back to those bank of England forecast, the Federal Reserve forecast, when they were saying, don't worry, inflation won't remain high. In my opinion, those people should have predicted this a lot better and a lot sooner than what they did. So now we're going to talk about markets flipping. And you might wonder what that means. Well, as I said, the first six months of this year is widely regarded as the worst six months um, investment market period in a long, long time. Virtually everything went down over that period, apart from commodities and a few other bits, um, as you can see there. So on the first half of this year, the graph on the um, showing total return H1 2022, you can see that uh, Brent crude, commodities, gold, etc., shot up, went up massively. You look at what the returns have been like in July, um, gold's down, Brent crude's down, commodities are down, and all the stuff that's at the bottom. Um, on the first six months, the MSCI World Index, Treasury, uh, Global Treasuries, Global Aggregate Corporates, um, they're all positive in the month of July. So markets po possibly, hopefully, thought as we got to the end of June, halfway through the year, those asset classes have been sold off heavily, they're cheap, and therefore people are looking to invest. And the flip of that is the oil price got up, the gold went up, etc., etc. They get to a certain point and investors might think, well, they're too high now. They start selling those, investing in the cheaper assets, so the markets have definitely flipped. Um, we have other um, graphs again supporting this with regards to countries around the world. First six months of this year, all the major economies, you can see there, the S&P 500 down 10.94%. And then in the month of July, it's up 8.97%. Uh, MSCI uh, India was the best performing um, uh, market uh, country, you can see there, in the month of July. Um, we don't have much invest in that as regarded as an emerging market. There will be a couple of percent maybe in some of our client portfolios, but the main one we're looking at there, MSCI World, S&P 500, the fact that they're on the march back up is fantastic. Uh, now different sort of um, sectors, different markets, financials, um, consumer discretionary down 21% there, financials down 6.5% IT, so the technology companies down massively. Uh, technology companies bouncing back lovely. Uh, Amazon shares, when clients have been in recently for market review meet, uh, annual review meetings, been talking about how Amazon as a stock from the first six months of this year, I think was down 33% at one point, and then it's raced back up in the last few weeks. Again, big investors looking at the price of one of the biggest companies in the world, saying how on earth is its share price so low? We were at a, uh, I was at a fund manager event down in London at the beginning of July, and a US fund manager was quite brash, and his message was uh, there could be a rip your face off rally depending on where interest rates go in the next six months and look at these particular stocks and Amazon was one of the stocks that he mentioned uh, and so far he's been proved correct whilst interest rates haven't been held back as much as he was hoping they certainly didn't go up as much as what banks uh, could have put them up by uh, so that's positive and the markets have certainly liked that. Uh, so in the final part of this week's presentation we're going to look at uh, how markets have performed recently um, as I say, it's been very pleasing that uh, markets have gone up nicely in the month of July. Um, that's not to say that we should uh, rest on our laurels and just think, okay, everything's over, markets are going to come back up now. But it was a good bounce back uh, from where we were at the end of June. Um, so we can see on this chart here, uh, the S&P 500 uh, up 7.97% since July the 1st up until um, August the 5th. Uh, MSCI World Index uh, up 7%, FTSE 100 lagging behind at 4%, but 4% still good. Um, if I was a used car salesman, I've said this a couple of times in recent client meetings, if you annualise that month's growth, you're looking at 90% growth over the next 12 months on the MSCI and the uh, S&P 500. Clearly that won't happen, but as I say, it was a good bounce back all the same. Um, now the negative news, when you look at the performance since the start of 2022, 
FTSE 100, the only one still in profit there. Again, buoyed by the oil companies, BP, Shell, etc., the commodity companies. Uh, they're the ones that have made the money. But if you look at that graph and how much it's gone up and down by, it can turn quite quickly. And that fall off you can see there in uh, the month of June uh, is quite is quite st steep. Um, the um, the MSCI World Index and the S&P 500, although they're up the most from July the 1st, are both still in negative territory year to date. As ever, we say to all clients, when you come to invest in a pension drawdown strategy, a long-term investment strategy, whatever it may be, you're investing for the long term. When we look at the five-year growth of these markets, the S&P 500 is still up over 92% over the last five years. FTSE 100, really poor in comparison, only up 20%. Uh, again, we're down by Brexit and COVID, etc., etc. But the S&P 500, when that market turns, the major companies of the world are on that market. It goes up, um, goes up quite fast, as you can see. Um, and as I say, for those clients who've been invested for the long term, you will get good returns. So thanks for listening to the latest Wealth of Advice market update recorded on Monday, the 8th of August. Uh, thankfully, it was a bit more of a it was more of a positive update than we uh, presented a few weeks ago. Markets bounced back nicely. We're not going to rest on our laurels. We'll continue doing all the investment research that we do, speak with many companies, uh, go to as many seminars as we can do. I was up in Edinburgh last week with four or five of the team talking to fund managers up there. Jordan's in the room next door as we speak, uh, speaking to another fund manager right now. So we'll continue with that, see how we think things are going. Uh, and hopefully, as I say, the second half of 2022 can be more positive than the first half. As ever, if any clients need to get in touch, please don't hesitate to give us a call. Um, there is expected to be another heat wave this week, so hopefully everyone can enjoy that, uh, enjoy the sun and uh, more positive things the next time we do a market update. Thank you. Bye.